So like Okay. Questions. How much is the Explorer Pass? Explorer's Pass, they didn't say directly, but I think it's like an extra $8. Because I feel like people, even if they're only going one day, they'll still get it. Debatable. See, that's the thing. Some of those bonuses are automatically going to be happening anyway, and they can easily just jump in after they're done playing that day. Well, yeah, true. Or, like, right before they leave. But I think the Explorer's Pass is specifically meant so that players can enjoy an entire trip. Like, I want to. Pl I planned out for St. Louis that if I were to fly there, that I would be there from Friday to Monday morning. That way, I could actually go there, see any other sites. Probably, if the missus is with me, then we'll go see a zoo or some other features throughout the city that way we can have a bit of a vacation in addition to doing a pokemon event granted it is a pokemon event but that's only a small portion of it well when do you have to decide on that on what or did you already just take off the explorer's pass no for st louis yeah i've been off oh so you were already off and that's just whether you're... Yeah, as soon as I heard it happening, I knew to request off for it. In some situations, you want to just request off the second they announce any Safari Zones. Because quite often they have an event going on for regular players around the world. Which are higher chances for other things going on. So whenever there's a Pokemon event, you do want to request off if you need to. Or just make sure you play during that time frame. Like that Sinnoh event that happened at the beginning of the month, that was actually the Sinnoh Pokemon oh, yeah, yeah. when Hippopotamus and oh, yeah. all those other things were going around. That was actually the Safari Zone in I think the Philippines or Vietnam. Oh. I forget the exact location, I'm sorry. But there was another Safari Zone going on during that time frame. So they had an event happening around here as well. That way, people didn't have that fear of missing out, interacting in other sections. But, they put certain Pokemon in all the other places, then you're just like, you want that Pokemon. Yeah. But that's the thing, they want, they want some fear of missing out, because that drives people to go there, watch, the and play. Yeah. Like, the other one, Liverpool had some cool Pokemon, like... Yeah. Like, I get the... Well, I'll... I'll they're not exclusive, though. They're... They're regionals, nonetheless. I'll wait till you're off recording, to Say what I gotta say about Niantic. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is good. Criticism, as long as it's constructive, is good. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. I'm okay. gonna vent. That's fine. There's a few things we can invent about as well. I should have had this a little bit ago, but... Welcome back, Augmented Ones. Just Storm here again with Jordan. Going into... Calling it episode 15. Season 2, episode 1. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, every time I drop on Anchor, it always says, like, season what, season that, episode, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... No, just normal. Yeah. <laughs> we're still number one. <clears throat> so yeah, we're going to be talking about all the things that are going on. Philly, dilly dilly. Talking about all the micro events going on. And the spawns. The spawns, yeah. That's what I want to know. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Wayfarer event going on in South Korea. Very exciting about that. Kind of in line with a few of our things we had theory crafting a little bit ago. We have an idea for a pocket producer segment, which we'll get into in a little bit. Some crazy ideas, but I think it can definitely get us some new players as well as new audience and help the game and other players in general, too. And for the Dirty Augmentionals, we're talking about personal rewards. How you reward yourself for 
reward yourself. <laughs> and make sure you tune in later for the cocktail... No. Oh, yeah. The cocktail calibration, adults only. That's where we're breaking down a specific brew or a healthy alcohol substitute. That will actually help you relax. And a good way to relax, and that way you're not just drinking beers, you get that beer gut going. Beer is healthy to an extent. We'll get into that during the cocktail calibrations, but stay tuned. Augmented, Augmented Naturally, episode 15, starts now. Okay, so the micro-event's going on. This week, it was kind of hit or miss what was going on. There so. Was a lot. First off, everyone was pissed off at Niantic for other things, which, should we just start off with that? Yeah. Yeah, let's start off with that. Seven kilometer eggs. Seven kilometer eggs have been, since the summer event, they had a, I'm not, I'm sure you remember, all the regionals were in seven kilometer eggs, unknowns were in ten kilometer eggs, and it was supposed to be a Niantic thank you for a great summer type event for all the players. Like, that players... Was before I started playing again. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, basically, the players went out and made sure that we interacted with so many points or had s basically scored so many points by catching certain Pokemon during certain time frames that Niantic wanted to reward us with that and that reward was regionals or unknowns, and then a few other things as well, in seven kilometer eggs. Wow. Which... Congress done. In that aspect, it's great. It was great for a while as well, but the problem with that came down to you still had to, you had to spend money to enjoy a bonus that you already spent money or had to play hard for, as opposed to... Yeah, to spend money. For incubators. Sure. Because at base value, outside of a box, one incubator is a dollar fifty. A super incubator is... Incubator? Incubator? Bator? Why am I saying that weird? I don't know. Incubator? I don't know. I'm weird. Was... 200 coins, or $2 in-game, which, it's basically loot boxes, people are calling eggs now, because you spend that fifty. it's basically 50 coins per hatch, so 50 cents per hatch, and at the time, the egg pool was so large that half the time you ended up hatching the same thing. Exactly. And... I hatched a lot of eggs during that time frame. I probably hatched maybe 100 eggs a week, something like that. Wow. And the 10 kilometer eggs, I hatched four out of the six unknowns that were in there. It spelled out ultra. Four out of the five. I missed one. Um, and for the regionals, I hatched three out of the four shinies. For the regionals. Which so I have one of each shiny get? regional from the 7 kilometer eggs. But there were some other things going on that felt a little but different. But which were they? It was Kangaskhan. You got a Kangaskhan? Yeah. Yeah, I have a few too. I gotta travel to Australia. <laughs> no, you don't. Kangaskhan. Uh, Farfetch'd. Daniel Farfetch'd. Taros. I and Mr. Mine was the other one that I didn't get. So, thanks to the Philadelphia Safari Zone, I'll finally have a shiny Mr. Mine. And, fingers crossed... Shiny Voltorb. No, 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 the, um... See, that's the thing. Mime Jr. is a... Because Mr. Mime is a regional variant, yeah. Mime Jr. is only in... The UK. Five kilometer eggs in... Europe. Europe. Which means people will get shiny Mr. Mime, but they won't get Mime Jr. Mm -hmm. unless they or in Europe. introduce breeding in some way down the road. Now imagine that. Breeding with the Ditto, like in the old days. <clears throat> yeah. 
That'll be interesting, all right. Oh, but... I'll go into more details about some of the ideas I have for these 7km eggs and why they were pushing so hard with them. Well, I have an idea, too. <laughs> but the other regional... Uh, what's the name? 